Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are in 1 Kings chapter 22, and we resume our study in verse 29. 1 Kings 22, 29. I hope you can get your Bible so that you can read along with me. And while you're getting it, I'll remind you about the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the Bible versebyverse.com. There you can study all of the Bible with me, verse by verse, for complete series going through the whole Bible. You choose, you click, you listen to whichever series, whichever book of the Bible, chapter, section, however you want to do it. Begin in the beginning, if you like, in Genesis and go all the way through Revelation. I encourage you to do that at least one time, if you never have. But it's all there at thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 29. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. So they're going out to battle. Jehoshaphat was a good man. He had a heart for God, but sometimes it doesn't seem like he is playing with a full deck. Like right here, he tags along, even though he probably believed Micaiah's prophecy that it was going to end in defeat. Verse 30. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. I rest my case concerning Jehoshaphat having a full deck. You see it right here. Ahab knows the king of Assyria will be gunning for him in this fight. If he if they don't get anybody else, they want to get the king. They want to get Ahab, king of the north. So Ahab says, hey, Je Jehoshaphat, I got an idea. You dress up in your king clothes, see? Meanwhile, I'll just like an ordinary soldier. And Jehoshaphat says, okay. Nothing wrong with that idea. No, you might as well just paint a bullseye on your back, Jehoshaphat, because everybody's going to think that you're Ahab. And you're going to be the first one that they come gunning for. And if there are any snipers, they're going to be aiming at you. 31. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains who had rule over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, except only with the king of Israel. See? That's what I was saying. The king of Syria says, concentrate on finding someone who is dressed like a king and kill him because it's going to be Ahab. Ahab is rotten to the core to do what he did to Jehoshaphat after the king of Judah offered to help him out in a battle that really wasn't his. 32, and it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Ahab tried to use Jehoshaphat as a lightning rod, and it worked, for a while anyway. It worked until the enemy realized that it wasn't Ahab. And of course, God was protecting good King Jehoshaphat as well, protecting him from his own stupidity. 34. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariots, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. See? Some, look at this, some unknown enemy soldier shot an arrow at random and it just happened to hit Ahab in the chest. <clears throat> it just happened to slice between two pieces of armor. 
just happen? No. God is a very good shot. That's what, that's what happened. 35. And the battle increased that day, and the king was held up in his chariot against the Syrians, and died at evening, and the blood ran out of the wound into the inside of the chariot. He stayed in his chariot until he died. And as a result, by the time Ahab died, there was a pool of blood in his chariot. And even that was fulfilling the word of God. 36. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. The word of God through Micaiah has come to pass. The prophet of God spoke the word of God, and the Israelite army scatters because their leader is dead, just exactly as God, through Micaiah, said it would happen. 37. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. Ahab is buried in the capital city. 38. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood. And they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord which he spoke, see, as punishment for the murder of Naboth. God told Ahab back in chapter 21, 19, Thus saith the Lord, the play, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And it's happening. Because God's word is always right. 39. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. And Ahaziah will be as evil as his father. 41. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Now, <clears throat> Ahab had been reigning in the north, in the north, four years when Jehoshaphat became king of the south. 42. Jehoshaphat was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ahazuha, the daughter of Shelai. Jehoshaphat was a good king. He did his best to keep the southern kingdom faithful to God. He sent Bible teachers throughout the land to try to keep the people's focus on God. 43. And he walked in all the ways of Asa his father, and turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. And Jehoshaphat made, a peace, made peace with the king of Israel. And we just saw that. Maybe it was convenient to worship God on the high places, but God keeps mentioning that they continue to do that even though that wasn't his will. It might have been convenient to worship Almighty God on the high places. But in wake, when it came to offering sacrifices, that was supposed to be done in Jerusalem at the Holy Temple only. God had a specific way that he wanted to be worshipped, and the only way it could happen was in the Holy Temple using the Holy Altar and performed by the consecrated priest. He did not want his worship corrupted by people doing their own thing on some high hill someplace. Verse 45. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he showed and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And the remnant of the Sodomites who remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. He got rid of homosexuality, and God commended him for it. Jehoshaphat, we already saw, God said it, did right 
in the eyes of God, and part of that right was to get rid of the homosexuals. Not tolerate that. It's an evil, sinful behavior in the eyes of God. And there were even homosexual prostitutes, which were a part of some false religions back in those days. He got rid of it all. It would be a right thing in the God's eyes if the sinful act of homosexual behavior was not seen as just another acceptable alternative lifestyle. 47. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Edom, evidently, and Edom was, was the country just south of Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel. Edom evidently was under the control of Israel at that time. And Edom was just, like I said, south of Israel. And they didn't have a king. So they were ruled by Israel. 48. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they went not, for the ships were broken at Ezion Geber. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. Well, good for him. He's getting smart. Could be that, that Judah's ships sunk because God did not want the faithful south to become partners with the wicked north again. You know, sometimes the things that we may call bad are actually good disguised as bad. Sometimes God allows bad to prevent something worse. 50. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. Jehoram was not a good king like his dad. He married the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. That was wrong. And it was also an indication that his heart was wrong because a godly person would not fall in love with a wicked person like that. They would be turned off by their wickedness, not attracted. 51. And Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. And now you see why God would not want the south to make an alliance with the north the north was full of sin which had a, which would have been a bad influence on the south well we'll stop right there <clears throat> but we will continue in second kings next time might as well because it continues the story so i hope you can join me next next time in second kings chapter 1 verse 1 Bring your Bible as usual. And remember, you can study all of the Bible with me anytime you want to, as much as you want to, at using my audio Bible messages at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you want to be a part of this ministry, you can pray for me and pray for God's Word because that will make you a part of this ministry right away. And also, when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, you can go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, in Second Kings, so long, everyone.